You ever have one of those moments where you get to a part of a show that everyone raves about and says is really awesome, and then you watch it and absolutely hate it, but can't really figure out why, aside from vague reasoning that doesn't hold up to scrutiny, only to realize years after the fact what the actual reasoning was for why you hated it? As you can probably guess, that's pretty much my relationship with The World God Only Knows, specifically Season 3, The Goddesses Arc, and why I think the twist in this particular part of the series completely ruins everything that the series had going for it up until then. As fans of the series know, there's an important concept present in The World God Only Knows that makes it feel remarkably different from other harem anime. Once the main character, Kema, has quote-unquote conquered a girl and gotten her to fall in love with him, the girl forgets her romantic feelings for Kema and all of her memories of the romance they shared, allowing him to move on to the next girl. It's a clever byproduct of how the show is structured. The plot is technically about Kema cleansing evil spirits from these girl's hearts, and having them fall in love with him is just the method he's told to use in order to achieve this goal. The Goddess's arc decides to throw this concept out completely and have all the girls he previously conquered start remembering their romantic encounters with him. And because the plot for this particular arc has him reconquering some of the characters, it turns into a more typical harem where Kama has to divide his attention amongst all the girls, but with the added tension of not letting any of them find out that he's dating multiple people at once. In a sense, the first two seasons of this series don't really belong in the harem genre at all. There's only one romantic interest present at a time, and when their arc is concluded, they become irrelevant to the story and Kama moves on to someone else. And so removing this element is the only thing that makes it a harem anime at all. And I absolutely hate this element of the goddess's arc, but not just for the reasons I've mentioned so far. Yes, it's incredibly disappointing to see the more singular focus that the plot had in its earlier seasons become more spread out and complex, and I think I'm pretty much done beating that dead horse, but as I've learned over so many years watching anime, a structure is rarely ever inherently bad. Rather, it's the result of that structure and how it affects the other elements of the story that decide quality. I've been told by those who have finished this part of the series, as well as manga readers, that they like this arc because it's a commentary on the harem genre at large, and how said genre treats relationships as less intimate and personal than they should be in real life. Regardless of whether this is true, or if the harem genre even needed this kind of commentary, I can at least understand this line of thinking, and, if not for one crucial plot point, I could see this as a solid reason for why this arc is great. Of course, it's that one point that sends the thematic message of the story in the completely opposite direction. That being that Kama doesn't want to do this. The series opens with him accidentally signing a contract with a demon, and if he breaks that contract, he dies. That's what motivates him to start interacting romantically with real-life girls in the first place. And this contract continues to stay in place during the goddess's arc. Kama might have a lot of pretty negative or downright rotten personality traits, but he doesn't want to cheat on these girls. After two full seasons of getting them to fall in love with him, he at least has a partial understanding of how to treat someone you want to be in a romantic relationship with. And he would certainly know that cheating is bad based on his experience with dating sims. The only reason he is trying to conquer multiple girls at once is because it's literally his job, and if he doesn't do it, he will die. That's why this shift in structure doesn't work from a thematic perspective. You can't say that it's a commentary on the harem genre and how main characters lead on multiple girls at once if the protagonist is being forced against his will to do this. Based on the previous seasons and how his character is constructed, there is no conceivable reason why Kama would ever act like this without the threat on his life, and it's why I hate this part of the series. The tension and drama that result from this season feel entirely manufactured from a desire to shake up the formula, rather than a desire to let the characters evolve naturally and see what Kama would actually do with the knowledge and experience he's gained from all of his conquests. Even School Days, as much as I despise it, has a better grasp on this since Makoto is willingly cheating on everyone out of his desire to fuck a bunch of hot girls. And if School Days is doing something better than your story, then you you have seriously fucked up at some point.
As usual, I don't say all of this out of a desire to rip this series away from those who love it, but rather out of a need to explain my own position and why I can't relate to those who feel differently. Storytelling is an immensely complex process, despite how simple we armchair analysts make it sound, and one single fault can change the entire meaning behind something and morph it into a hot mess that comes out more displeasurable than intended. I would certainly like to enjoy the goddess's arc as much as everyone else, but it just doesn't work for me because this one huge fault completely changes how I view this story. Special thanks to Jan Rogalski, Rourke Tenjoin, Christine Seibert, Tim Johnson, Call Me Cat Lord, Ember's Fave Roommate, Eugenio Mendoza, and all my other patrons for their generous support. My name is Ember, and I'll see you next time.